Hello everyone. So when substitution fails you or when you cannot rearrange your expression so that you can use substitution, the technique to use is integration by parts. So integration by parts is an application of a formula. Okay, so you start with a question. So normally the question, the way we like to label it is by calling it the integral of u dv. So this is the initial problem. So in your problem, initially what you have to do is you have label, you have to label in your integrant what is going to be u and what is going to be dv. So those are going to be the labels. So things that you have to label like what is u and what is dv. And then once you've decided in your question, in your problem, what is the u part and what is the dv part, you compute v and du respectively. So this is stuff that you have to compute. So you label u, you label dv, you compute du and you compute v, and then your problem, the integral of u dv, will become u times me, u times me, u times v minus the integral of v du. So that's kind of a complex formula, but with examples, things will become uh, simpler to manipulate. So here are the steps. So first in your integral, so this is absolutely crucial. So the first step here, like I've mentioned briefly, you need to identify in your problem, what is the u part and what is the dv part. Once you've made that choice, the second step is to compute du by of course computing the derivative of u and to compute v by finding an antiderivative or a primitive for dv. So you need to integrate. And then of course you plug and play in the formula above. So you apply the formula, but then in that formula, you're not done. There's still an integral to compute. So you need to compute that integral and that new integral Hopefully it's a basic integral, or maybe you have to use substitution or some other technique. You might have to reuse by parts, but it's another problem to attack separately. Here are some tips to help you organize your solution. First, first thing, always make sure that your question cannot be done by using some other tricks. So the integration by part is really the last thing you want to try. Okay, so it's the last, last, last technique you want to try. And actually, even with the other techniques that we're going to see in this class, which are trigonomic integrals, um, trigonomic substitution, or partial fractions, normally you try to use one of those before you do e by parts. Uh, the idea here is that we want uh, to work with by part questions so that we get familiar with these type of problems as soon as possible. So always try to do something else first. Okay, so it's really your last, last resort. Okay, it's the last technique you bring to a date. Okay, so you want to do something else first. All right, um, when you are labeling, so when you have a question that you are going to do by part. So the second tip here, make sure when you're choosing U and DV together, that it's your full problem, that you're not forgetting anything before you do anything else. So U and DV together is always your question. It's not a computation here. It's really just a labeling process. Then for notation here, just to make sure that things are really well done, well written, I'll mention this, of course, with examples. Suppose X is your independent variable here. Um, when you are computing DU or dealing with the labeling of DV, so these expressions uh, should be a corresponding in your equation should always be matched together with a DX. So if you have a formula for DU, it's some equation dx. If you have a formula for dv, it's some equation followed by a dx. So the differential terms are always together. So for good notation. And next step here, uh, when you are choosing a dv, always make sure that you choose something that you know how to integrate. Okay, so because the computation of v is computing an integral. So if you choose something for dv that you can't integrate, uh, it's not going to, to work out. So make sure that your choice for dv is something that you can integrate. And once you apply the formula, you will always get a new integral. Okay, the integral of v du, where you are computing the v in the du, so be very careful. This integral like depends on two computations, the computation of v, which you get by computing the anti and anti derivative for, for dv, and, for, and you have to compute du, which is like the derivative of u. So those two terms need to be computed correctly, and always, 
always compare this new integral with the original one and always make sure that this new integral is easier to work with. If not, there's potentially a mistake. So when you're looking at your choice of u and dv, maybe you made the wrong labeling. And this can happen initially. And then, of course, you need to restart your question with different choices. But always look at your integral vdu before moving forward. All right, let's jump and look at an example. Let's compute the integral of x times ex dx. So first here, we can notice that in this integral, we have x, we have ex, and dx. So we have three terms. And if you try a substitution first, the only thing that would make kind of some sense is choosing u to be equal to ex, but then du is ex, which you don't have anywhere nearby. And there's an x there that would be alone. So if you try a substitution, there's no way, okay, any substitution, there's no way you're going to make this uh, integral uh, work out using that technique. So we have no choice at this point, at least, to try by part. So by part means we need to first label what is going to be u and what is going to be dv, knowing that dx is always going to be paired with the dv. And now we have to make a choice. Uh, where does your x go and where does ex go? So here I'm going to try, and hopefully this will work, I will put x inside u and I will put ex inside dv and I'm going to opt for the best with that choice. So before you compute anything, you need to make sure that u and dv together has everything. So u has x, dv has ex dx, all three terms are somewhere between distributed between u and dv and of course knowing that there's no choices for dx it's always paired with dv so now once you've made your choices you need to compute the derivative of uh, u with respect to x so when you compute du over dx the derivative of x is one and then when you're going to split this thing you get that du is equal to one dx so that's your du, and then when you are computing v, so here you need to find one primitive. Normally what you do is you apply whatever rule you need to apply, and the constant of integration, the easier one to work with is c equal to zero. So one primitive for ex is ex again. And normally when I do these things, I always make sure that uh, everything is well balanced by drawing this little circle of life thing. So what I mean by this is like I like to draw this circle where EX goes to one. So that's my, I see that EX goes to one. And those arrows are really need to be thought as differentiation arrows. So when you differentiate X, you get one. And when you differentiate EX, if I continue my circle of life, then you get EX again. So here, Hakuna Matata. Okay, so we know that this uh, substitution uh, uh, these computations sorry, are computed correctly. Now we apply the formula. So here, if you compute the derivative, if you compute the integral of x ex, so it's uv first, so you get x ex minus the integral of v, so the integral of v, which is ex, du, which is dx. So now we have a new integral to compute, but here you go. Like, look at this. The integral of EX is, of course, EX again. So you're just going to get X EX first. And then the integral of EX is EX. And then once you're done with the second integral, you can sign your thing by going plus C. And that's your final answer. And uh, just to show you, just a small remark before finishing that example here, and I'll write this remark in, in red, and this remark is going to be evil, so I'm going to draw a skull here. So remember, when you see a skull somewhere, that's not good. So suppose for some reason, okay, you would have put ex inside u instead, and x inside, uh, x inside dv. And so the dx, there's no choice. So you still have everything, you know, everybody's there distributed between u and dv. But then when you compute du, there's of ex is ex. And here's just a piece of advice. Instead of writing du over dx, you can just write du 
then compute the derivative and just multiply by dx right away. And this is what I'll do from now on. I'm just going to compute the derivative and write dx after, just so to save one step. And then if you find one primitive for x, well, using the power rule, you can use x squared over 2. So your integral could have become instead equal to uv, which is ex times x squared over 2, minus the integral of v, which is x squared over 2, times ex dx. But now when you look at this brand new integral, we started with a polynomial of degree 1. So here, this function here is a polynomial of degree 1 times an exponential function. And now what do we have? Well, we have a polynomial of degree 2 times an exponential. So this integral is, is tougher than the original one. So when that happens, so if you do make a wrong choice for u and dv, this is what will typically happen. You're going to create a new integral that is going to be tougher to work with. And if it is tougher than the original one, then you need to go back to the drawing board and make new choices for u and dv. You need to go rethink your life. All right, for this video, an introduction video, that's it. On the next one, we'll do more example. All right, bye-bye,